This is the EVP Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the EVP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Beaker. And Ghosty over here. And I know we're mixing it up a little bit. I introduced the show two weeks in a row because that's how we roll. We just want to do things sometimes like that. Yeah, we're getting back on track. Because otherwise it would have been me doing it twice in a row. Yeah, true. (laughs) Technically, technically the, the theater investigation was supposed to be your episode. It didn't work out that way. Scheduling conflicts. We're back on track now. This is yeah. my episode. We're talking about a sandwich. A haunted <laughs> sandwich this week. Yes. The Monte Cristo. And it sounds delicious. Hauntingly delicious. I'm scared. Not like Lucky Charms. It's not magically delicious. This is hauntingly delicious. It's... Oh, wait. Hmm. It's not a sandwich. Monte Cristo? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a sandwich. It is not... a sandwich, but it's a but breakfast. It's a, well, is it a breakfast sandwich? It's a breakfast sandwich. Because it's like a, a it's ham. got French toast bread. It's like French toast bread. It's got ham and like cheese, and you dip it in like a raspberry jam. You can, yeah. You should. Or syrup. And it's got powdered Whatever sugar you want on do. it. Whatever you want to do. Oh, it's a delicious. Um, no, actually, we're talking about the Count of Monte Cristo. Sorry, I'm Jim Convizial. <laughs> Yeah, that I, movie. Stupid jokes aside, we're actually talking about the Monte Cristo Homestead in Juni, Australia. Have you been there? No. Have you? No. We should go. I'm um, so down for that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in the process of getting my passport renewed. So as soon as it comes back, we can go. So this is Juni, Juni Australia. It's in New South Wales. <clears throat> Don't know. It's somewhere in there. Australia geography. You whatsoever. Australian people. You people from down under, you can tell us. Um, yeah. And then? And then. So this house was built in 1885 by a guy named Christopher William Crawley. Uh, he became very rich doing his business uh, and was able to retire early. Did you hear how he got all rich? I, I read it, but I don't remember. Tell me. So he ended up, he bought all this land and... With the land that he bought, he had all this acre, and they give you – he was able to buy it super cheap for, a, like, a pound an acre. And in order to buy it so cheap, you had to farm on it. And he wasn't making much money at all farming. I guess the land wasn't very good. But I guess he knew some people, and he found – he heard word that they were bringing a railroad through pretty soon. So – he decided with the land that he had, extra that he wasn't really doing anything with, to build a big-ass hotel on it. So he builds a hotel on it about the time that the railroad tracks finish, and that's the only thing in that area. So that's where everybody goes. Makes sense. It's like the Clown Motel. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So that's so, genius. So it's the only thing he becomes wealthy off of that. So that's how he has his money. So he gets all this money, right? Now he's rich. So he's like, I'm going to retire. I got money. So he builds the homestead. Yeah, that's what he does with it. Because it's a big ass, like mansion like a state so this is like two stories and looking at the pictures and the video of this place it is gorgeous i do want to visit here someday um because of the architecture and, and just the way it looks also because of all the uh tragedy and the ghosts that we're going to tell you about here in just a second um so he and his family lived there up until 1948 so they were there for quite some time was it 60 70 years yeah. So, and it, I mean, it kind of follows the rules. Not really. If this was built in the U.S., it would follow the rules. But it's outside of the U.S. <laughs> well, I don't know. Australia is kind of new, like like the U.S. is. Okay, we'll give them. We'll give them the one hundred year rule. So this is over a hundred years, definitely haunted. Um, <laughs> so, the the Crawley family, like I said, they lived there until nineteen forty eight. From nineteen forty eight to about nineteen sixty three, it was abandoned. Like, no one lived there. It became under disarray. It was vandalized, graffitied, all that fun stuff that happens, you know, when abandoned buildings are. I don't know. I don't know what it is that attracts people to, hey, that's, that no one lives here. No one works here. This building's abandoned. Let's go. Squatters. Let's destroy it. Squatters. Squatters. Hop, hop in there, yeah. Damn. Dirty. Now, damn. 1963, it was purchased by a couple named Red and Olive Ryan. And they are still... The they still own their it, their yeah. family currently owns it. I think it's uh, one Passed of their on. sons. One of their sons currently owns it. Lives there. Uh, it is currently a museum and an antique showcase. 
They have a souvenir shop, and it is also advertised as Australia's most haunted house. I was looking at their website. Uh, it looks like they do do still offer um, ghost tours daily from like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, or not daily. Is it daily? It might be daily. Yeah, probably. I think it's, it might be on the weekends, too. I read something about Saturday and Sunday only. There's a Google machine you there's, can do. There's, it's on the website. Yeah. It's there. But every <laughs> Saturday at 6 p.m., they offer, like, haunted tours. Like, you, you can, can I think you can hunt? invest. I think you can ghost hunt. And it's, like, every Saturday. The the walking tours, like, during the daytime, it's free, I believe. And you don't have to book anything. You can just go. But the ghost tours, you do have to book in advance. If you're in Australia and you want to go yeah. visit the Monte Cristo Homestead. But here's why you should go visit the Monte Cristo Homestead. Well, like just hearing that there's only been two owners makes me leery that it's like or weary or leery, leery or weary, 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 weary. I don't know. I don't know. As I lay here, weak and weary. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, it's a word. Look, yeah. We know what we're doing. <laughs> makes me we wonder. Promise. <laughs> makes it me makes wonder me. if how haunted it really is with only these two owners in this time span and. I guess let's find out. But two, but that doesn't mean anything because you could have a place that has only had one owner and could be haunted as crazy. Yeah, haunted as shit. Haunted as haunted as stuff. Yeah, we're good. We're <laughs> articulate today. We are good with we words. We know English. It's our only language we know. Yeah, <laughs> we're horrible at it. Yeah. Mm. So so okay. So here are some of the this this place has had a lot of tragedy, a lot of death, a lot of stuff has gone on here. This is why they say it's. Some of the reasons why they say it's haunted. So we're going to start off with the owner, the original owner, Christopher Crawley. Um, he died December 14th, 1910. He, uh, it was a, he died from a combination of heart failure and blood poisoning. What ended up happening is he had a carbuncle or a big boil on his neck. A carbuncle. And uh, it, would, it would rub up against like the starch and the fabric on his uh, shirts. And it... Uh, caused the the boil to like basically get infected, and it poisoned his blood, and he ended up dying from that. Now he said he it said that he still haunts the room he died in. I'm I'm gonna assume that it's his bedroom, the master bedroom that he died in. And then uh, his wife, her name's Elizabeth. They say her she well she died. Did she died? She built. She stayed in the attic. Pretty much from the time her husband died. For like 23 years. Yeah, so from the time he died till the time she died, she was just so distraught. She just, she built a chapel in there and she just stayed in there for, yeah, for 23 years. And then she died in, at the age of 92 and August 12th of 1933. My birthday. Oh, shit. Not 1933, though. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not that the year, old. That's the baby squatch. Baby guy. squatch was born. <laughs> But <laughs> she died and I arose from the ashes. But like it's, it said that she's uh, she wasn't the nicest person. No, she, she's she was abusive. Yeah, especially to the servants. Um, no, in that twenty three years, she only left the house twice. She, I bet she stunk. I bet she was probably. real stinky. <laughs> so, um, one of the yeah, she. I guess she like kind of ruled with an iron rod. It still said that iron the fist. iron fist. Yes, <laughs> Ruse got the iron uh, rod. What are you gonna do with that? Iron rod. Well, <laughs> they hold to the iron rod. Um, my religion just popped in there for a second. Um, it says that she'll try to scare away you or scare you off if she doesn't like you, and you'll know that it's her because you'll feel like cold air on your skin. Oh, okay. Um, now it's rumored that there's a couple of the servants or maids that live there that uh, Mr. Crawley kind of had a thing for. He wasn't uh, very faithful. These are rumors. They haven't actually proven these. But one of them was a maid who got pregnant. And then. And she wouldn't reveal the father. And she was like super afraid that they were going to take her baby away from her when the baby was born. She didn't want that. Now, they're not exactly sure what happened or the reason for this, but she fell. Or jumped. Or, or jumped. Or, or was pushed, pushed from the second floor balcony right in front of the front door, and she died on impact. <clears throat> um, it's, it's said that she haunts the veranda uh, where she jumped from or was pushed. They say that, like, Elizabeth found out 
that this maid was impregnated by her husband and she got jealous and pushed her over the balcony. But rumor rumors, we don't know for sure. Um, now it is said that where she, the spot she landed on, on the stairs, blood stain. there's still blood stains that you could still see. Well, it looks like it's ble- been bleached. Yeah. It's been bleached. Uh, but you can still see like where the spot was that she where landed. the bleach stains are. Yeah. You can see the bleach stains. Uh, there was another maid, uh, who had a baby and this little boy ended up getting hit by what was it? A carriage. Yeah, it was a carriage. His name was Harold. Harold. So he got hit by a carriage, and then they, they chained him up something. They chained him up in, like, a basement or something? Uh, the, he lived in, like, the dairy house. So it was, like, a, a little house on the property. A dairy it wasn't house. In, yeah. I, I don't have it in the notes here, but I heard that on uh, one of the podcasts I was listening to. So he's um, in there for 40 so, years. Yeah, they chained him up for, like, 40 years. Apparently because of this head injury. Um, he's just he, running wild? Yeah. he was. He was <laughs> prone, chain him up? Well, he was prone to violent outbreaks. Ah. So they chained him up, and he lived there, like I said, for it was like 30 or 40 years okay. he was chained up. And then they ended up sending him to a mental hospital? Well, so the police found him. Oh. oh. And they're chained up, clinging to his dead mother. And Oh, his mom's in there dead? Yeah. I wonder if he killed him, or killed her. He might have? I don't know. But here's the thing, is it's also rumored that Harold was the son of Christopher Crawley. Another one. Apparently, this dude got around. We're not sure. It's all rumor. And I think that's why, like, they lived there while this place was abandoned, after all the Crawleys moved out. So they found Harold sometime in there um, before the Ryans bought it. He was and chewing on his mom. Pro- uh, he, well, I, I guess he was, like, hugging her or embracing her. Chewing. But chewing. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. che- nibbling on her hair. Don't do that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so he ended up dying in that asylum. That yeah, he was at. shortly after, like not too long after, he wasn't there very long. And it sounds good. Let's, let's see how many ways I can. For that. Let's let's see how many ways I can say he died sh- soon after. <laughs> <laughs> but they say if you go in that that room where they found him, uh, even though he died in the asylum, they say he still haunts that room. And if if you listen carefully, you can still hear the chains being dragged across the floor. E. Um, I'm going to assume all of these are before the Ryans got there. So we'll get to the Ryans last, but there was, there's a, a stable boy named Morris. Did you hear about this one? No, I haven't heard about old Morris. So Morris was a stable boy. He worked there and there was one day he got really sick and he stayed in bed. He was too sick to work. Now his boss didn't approve of him sleeping in it wasn't too kindly to being sick right well he thought he was faking so to get him out of his bed and get him to work he lit the bed on fire yeah that'll do it yeah well you know most people if if i was sleeping he lit my bed on fire i wake up you know i'm gonna jump out of bed probably run out of the room right this is how sick he was couldn't couldn't get out of bed he ended up burning to death that's that's a dick move yeah. Well, uh, so he those, thought, well, like I said, he thought he was faking it. I so guess he lit his bed on fire. It had to be one of those things where it's like he must have done it a few times. He must have faked it a few times, quite, maybe. Quite possibly. I'm not 100% sure on that. But or maybe this guy's just an asshole. Maybe. So, yeah, he, he well, he assumed that if he lit the bed on fire, this Morris would jump out of bed and, you know, get up and get to work. Yeah, but he was too sick and he burned to death. They say in the room where he burned. You could still hear his screams every now and then. Shit. The guy that lit the bed on fire just like walked away like he didn't do it. Probably. <laughs> what I don't, the hell? Like, I don't he just know. didn't realize. What the? His house, it's on fire. I don't know what's going on. He's all, ha ha, get up. Oh, he's not getting up. He'll eventually get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he didn't try to save him or anything. He's just like, oh. He just lights, it all, lights his bed on fire, just walks, up, walks away. He <laughs> yeah, probably know. lit the bed on fire, assuming he would get up, and then he just went back to work or something. Probably found out about it later. Uh, he burned someone alive. That that that's just insane. Like I don't know what that would be your go to. Like oh, I'm gonna light his bed on fire to get him out of. I'm gonna do that next time I call you and you're not up. I'm gonna come light your bed on fire. Yeah. No, I won't. Who, don't. I'm who not does do... that to somebody? What? Like it's your somebody's property where they're sleeping on. You're lighting it on fire. Who the hell does that? Well, Damn. apparently his boss. Some bitch. Oh, I skipped over one. 
Yeah, um, old I did. Ethel you, Crawley. You talk about Ethel Crawley. Uh, she died in 1917. Uh, she, a nurse. An, oh, she was the baby. Yeah, she was the baby. She was only 10 months old. So a, a nursemaid was holding her on the stairs, and she claims that something pushed the baby out of her hands. Yeah. And the stairs are kind of narrow and, and really tall. They are. So I could see if the baby kind of moved. The baby, oh, I don't know about something pushing a baby out of her hands. I, she claims it was an other otherworldly presence pushed her from behind and, and knocked the baby out I of her I think hands. the baby was squirming and she didn't have good hold on it and just blaming it on something else. But There's rumors that she was upset at the Crawleys and dropped the baby on purpose. So e- they, but when she was interrogated by police, she uh, was 100% very adamant that something pushed her or knocked the baby out of her arms. And so the baby was only 10 months old. That's old enough to be squirming. Yep. So some of the... the in that, That's old it, enough to be walking, too. Is it? But not down, not down the stairs. We're going to be crawling. Yeah, but crawling. not down the stairs. Yeah, not walking down the stairs, no. But so around the stairwell, and this is like when you first enter the house, I believe. Um, it's said that the children become very irritable and upset near, near these stairs. Uh, people say that they feel like they're being pushed on their backs. So like if they stand at the top of the stairs where the incident happened, people say they can feel someone pushing on their back. And then other people say they feel like a cold, tiny hand grab theirs as they're going up and down the stairs. Huh. I can see that. You hear about old Jack Simpson. Jack Simpson, a car- oh, he's a- no, I I heard a little bit of him, but go on, tell me about Jack Simpson. So Jack Simpson, he was a caretaker in the place before the Ryans bought it in 1963. So this happened in 1960. Uh, he was on okay. The- so while it was abandoned, while it was abandoned, he was still a caretaker. So there were still people that lived there on the property, but not in the house while it was abandoned. If that makes sense. Yeah, they just like, kind of like Harold checked was, it out. Harold was there while it was abandoned. Uh, I believe the stable boy might have been there during the abandoned time. I'm not sure when the whole Morris thing happened. But Jack Simpson, this happened in 1960. Now, he was shot on the main porch by a man. uh, I I don't remember the kid's name. But apparently he went to the local movie theater and watched the movie Psycho about three times. And then decided he was going to go on up to the old Monte Cristo and shoot Jack. And kill him. Huh. Um, huh. Afterwards, I guess he like decided to go up to the door uh, of the shed. And he carved in there with his pocket knife, die Jack, ha ha. So he already knew who Jack was. Well, from, from uh, investigations, I guess, uh, they'd never met. But he didn't know who Jack was. Jack didn't know who the kid was. Like... That there was no connection between the two of them, from what I understand. Hmm. So he just went there, shot him, and then carved in the, the door. Die, Jack, ha, ha. And it's, that is actually still on the door. If you know right where to look for it, it's still there. It's a little faded, but it's there, uh-huh. which I think is very interesting. Now, they say that, um, they say that um, it's possible that – now, they blamed it on the movie Psycho, like I said – but other reports say that they think because of all the other stuff that's gone on at this homestead that he was possessed like some by some worldly force, other worldly force that caused him to shoot Jack and carve this in the door. I don't buy I that. I think he's a squat. He was uh, a squatter. It's possible. I think he, that's where he was hanging out and he probably knew who he was and was just wanting to kill somebody. I, I think I'm going to agree with that. I don't think that Jack knew the guy. But probably whoever's people squatting there all talk about, oh, the old caretaker Jack's going to be coming by, so you all got to scatter. That would make sense. See? But, yeah, yeah it's, they, a big, I guess he felt like after watching Psycho three times, I'm going to go kill somebody. Because that's what you do. That's what you do when you're Psycho. When you watch, when you watch, yes. You watch Psycho. When you watch when Psycho, you... you become Psycho, and you <laughs> shoot Jack. Yeah, because it's all movies' faults. Because before movies, nobody killed anybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's movies that did yeah, it. Death didn't happen until the 1920s. <laughs> until they showed you how to do it in the movies. Yeah, 1920s. <laughs> when the uh, silent movie era. Exactly. Out. Everybody lived the a full life era. until then. Right. Yeah, they never did it in plays. 
None of that. No, it was, it was the movies. <laughs> um, so the Ryans, like I said, they bought it in 1963. They had their own share of experiences. So what happened to the Ryans? So one of the things that happened is, first off, their cat and dog didn't want anything to do with the house. They ended up running away. Like, they can't keep pets in that house. They've tried over the years. Anytime they get a pet, the pet, like, disappears. No, it wouldn't do that? A turtle? It, probably not. Turtles wouldn't do that. But most people don't get turtles as pets. But I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, is a turtle pet a popular thing in Australia? Like, Oh, I bet you all sorts of things are popular out there. Probably. Is there anything? Oh, here's a wombat. Yeah, here's a, here's a poisonous spider. I don't know why I said wombat, but yeah. Um, <laughs> apparently, they, their cats and dogs would always run away, so they don't keep pets there. Uh, there was one night they came home from a night out with their kids and everything. They pull up, and you remind me, this, this time there was no electricity in this house. But they show up, and there's lights illuminating every room in the house. And they're like, what the heck? Aliens. Like, aliens, man. Aliens. Yeah, so they, they were confused, as anyone would be. You leave the house, no lights are on. I said everything would have to be like candles or torches or whatever. Is this the 60s? This was the 60s. Um, and at the time, like, because the house was built in the 1800s, electricity wasn't around when the house was built. Right. Um, I'm sure there's electricity now because the, the Ryans had um, renovated the home and, and restored it and probably added electricity. But at this point, the, no electricity. Everything is lit up. They tell their kids to stay in the car. They're going to go check. And when they turn back around, the entire house is dark. All the lights are off. So they go search the house. Um, and nothing. There's nobody there. They couldn't find anything or any reason why like everything was turned on. And now, there was another night they came home. And all of the chickens and their parrot were strangled to death. And their litter of kittens were also dead. Hmm. Don't know if that's paranormal or if maybe something got in because it's Australia and everything, every animal wants everything to Everything there, there is the most deadliest thing possible. According to a different podcast I listened to, one of the guys on that show served a mission in Australia, I believe, and he says everything there wants to kill you. <laughs> so I believe it. I don't know if the animals being dead were paranormal. It could have been like a disgruntled uh, python. python that probably would have eaten everything, not just strangled them. Um, probably took a couple on the way out. But there was probably, it's possible. <laughs> it could have been someone that was just mad at the Ryans for whatever reason. I, I don't think the dead animals were paranormal, but. Um, that's Yeah, that is weird, huh? Yeah. But yeah, they just come home and have everything dead. And then there's just been so many reports of different things happening throughout the years at the homestead. Um, people say the lights turn on and off by themselves. Uh, people say they get feelings of nausea or sadness, especially in the areas like where the maid dropped the baby down the stairs. They feel sadness there or where the maid jumped from the balcony and they feel sadness there. Um, they say people have fainted during some of the tours. Uh, a lot of the times people hear like disembodied whispers. Um, there's unexplained mists that people see. People claim they see orbs. I, orbs, yay. Um, <laughs> and then just a lot of poltergeist activity with things like moving around and stuff like that. Gotcha. So that's just some of the major or kind of the, the more popular stories of the Homestead Ranch, the Monte Cristo Homestead Ranch. That's not a ranch. Homestead. <laughs> I'm just going to keep adding words that don't. The Homestead either. Ranch the Estate. Homestead Ranch Estate Mansion Manor. <laughs> That place. That, yep, in Australia. Uh, what do you think about the, uh, the, the as many hauntings as they talk about? You know, uh, <coughs> I'm going to just tell you real quick. Like, you see in my notes here, you see how I've, I've written um, in green, spend the night. So what I did on the other podcast when I talked about this on Bacon Cell, um, we would determine if we would spend the night alone in this place or if we would go there on like a day tour, but we wouldn't go at night. Or if we just refused to go to the place at all because of the, the haunting. Um, this one I put that I would spend the night. So I don't feel, or at least at the time I, I wrote these notes, I didn't feel like it was that haunted. I didn't feel like it was that bad, you know, to spend the night there alone. Would you spend the night in the 
the one place where a dude was chained up? Maybe. I mean, that is part of the ranch. I, I'd probably stay, or not the ranch, the, t- the damn homestead. The manor. Uh, the manor. The man, <laughs> the, bur- the castle. Um, the estate. The, <laughs> uh, the just, the, a lot of this stuff is speculation rumors. The, yeah, there's a lot of tragedy that happened there, but I'm not too worried about a 10-month-old baby um, <laughs> spirit. It's going to bite your knees. Um, you know, I just, like I said, to, and just watching some of those videos, I didn't really get this vibe of like anything really negative or bad haunts this place. I mean, it sounds like it might just be previous employees that are just liked working there or family members that liked living there. I think it's more of the, uh, the wife Crawley, Mrs. Crawley, Mrs. Crawley. Yeah. I think it's more of her. Well, she just spent quite a bit of time there because, you know, like I said, they moved in 1885 and she died in like 1940. Yeah. If anything, I, I think it would be her. And 1930. Then it would be her Three. and the baby. Most likely. That's, that's who I think that would be it. That would be there. Yeah. It just, it didn't feel like it was as haunted. Like I know they bill it as Australia's most haunted house. And yeah. if it is the most haunted house, the rest Whack. of Australia, Whack. the rest of Australia has got to be very tame. Yeah, if this on. Most, I mean, just like I said, from the videos, they got all this the video, the the most poisonous shit. They're over here, got all the most dangerous of everything. I mean, I won't know for sure unless I go there myself. <laughs> but just from what I've seen, it doesn't seem like it's extremely haunted. Well, you know why? Because it seems like America has all the damn demons. We did well. That's because Americans are stupid. All the American. When's the Americans last time you heard a story of someone in Australia summoning a demon with a Ouija board? Probably, they probably try, but they're all busy here in America. Right. They, well, that's that would be the smart thing to do. I'm going to go to another country, summon demons, and then go home. <laughs> right. Get them all out of here. Yeah. Let them deal with it. <laughs> Every time I leave the country, I'm going to summon demons before I go home. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's kind of smart, though. Australians are smart. Yeah, yeah. You gotta hand it to them. Summoning demons in America <laughs> and then going back to Australia. <laughs> I get. It. I know what they're up to now. <laughs> We're on to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really think this place is that haunted either. I think it's pretty, pretty whack. I do want to go check it out, though. I would check it out, of course. I would check it out for, for the gram. Yeah. For what? <laughs> for the gram. For the gram. Instagram. Instagram. Oh yeah. The social media. <laughs> what are you thinking? We gonna the gram? I don't know. Trying to get some drugs over here. Yeah, <laughs> gram. <laughs> I'm. That's how I major up my food. Yeah. Instagram. So follow us. That's where we're at. We're on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. EVP dot pod. If you have a story that you'd like to share with us, if you've been to the Monte Cristo Hotel and have had experiences, uh, email us EVP dot pod at gmail dot com. Or you can hit us up on the, the social media. Yeah, I want to know how whack that place is. Yeah. <laughs> also, right. uh, if you're looking for ghost hunting gear, check out our affiliate link to ghoststop.com. That's where we buy most of our gear. Uh, there's a new one that we posted on Instagram that's on our wish list. It is that tracer light. Oh, so it's a motion tracer. Yeah. It shows if somebody's walking by it, it yes. will follow the motion of yeah. the, the That's, that's one of their dope. newer. That's one of their new items they just came out with. I saw it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so did DBO. He posted it on our Instagram. You can go there and check it out. And it looks really cool because it looks like it's just LED lights, but it's motion censored. So if a spirit sp- walks by it, it's supposed to light it up so you can see that there's someone walking by it. Um, I don't think it's really too expensive. I think it's only like 150 bucks. I could be wrong. I would like to see some uh, reviews of those actually working in the field. Some some investigations I would with say, that. well That'd maybe we should get one and we can do our own review all right yeah we should all right let's call that an episode yeah i yeah let's do all that. right go see don't play that peace out butterflies this is the evp podcast <laughs>